Hello, and in this video, we'll be looking at time constants and half-lives. Um, we'll start with some mathematics behind first-order kinetics, a quick recap. We'll then go on to look at half-lives and how they're defined. We'll do the same for time constants, uh, and that has several definitions. Um, and then we'll finally look at the relationship between the two. And the basis of all the maths around first-order kinetics really stems from um, the graph of uh, plasma concentration plotted against time. As described in the previous video, this is a negative exponential function uh, and is defined by this equation here. So plasma concentration as a function of time equals C naught, which is our starting concentration. That's our uh, plasma value, uh, plasma concentration value at this point here. E is Euler's number and has a value of 2.718. It's an irrational number, so these decimal points will just keep changing up to infinity. Um, we'll talk about Euler's number and why it's used um, in a second. Um, K is the rate constant of elimination and is a kind of quantification of how efficient the process is. So very high values of K will give you very steep curves. If K theoretically was zero, it would mean that this would cancel to one and your plasma concentration would remain at a constant C naught, i.e. if your rate constant of elimination is zero, there is no reaction happening. And T is time. So why E? Well, the answer is simplicity. Um, the graph of Y equals E to the X looks like this. It crosses uh, the Y axis at one and it has a unique set of properties. For any given value of X, the value on the Y axis will be given by E to the X, but also the gradient of the line at that point will be given by E to the X. And if you were to draw a line down to the X axis, and work out the area under the curve back to negative infinity, that would also be given by e to the x. Another way of saying that is that the function of e to the x differentiates and integrates to itself without changing. And so it becomes a much simpler way to describe the mathematics involving rates of change. So much so that the, the using the natural logarithm, i.e. log to the base e, has its own nomenclature. So whereas you would normally write log to the base 10 of x, for example, or log to the base 2 of x, if you're using log to the base e, you don't write log to the base e of x, you write ln x. ln stands for logarithmus naturalis. So it's got its own nomenclature, and that can throw you if you've, if you've not come across that before. Let's move on to half-life. The definition is the time taken for the plasma concentration to fall by half. So if we look at our um, plasma concentration against time graph, what does that look like? Well, our starting concentration is C0 by definition. So half of that would be C0 over 2. And if we extrapolate across, we get one half-life. So that's T a half here. And our half-life is this distance here. So after, if we said number of half-lives here, and then percentage completion of the reaction, and we plot this, we can say that after one half-life, we're 50% complete. If we were to do that again, our starting concentration this time is C0 over two. So half of that would be C0 over four, and we can extrapolate across again, and this will give us our second half-life. So this will be two T2, again with this gap here being equivalent to one half-life. If we carry on doing this, each time halving, we can say that after two half-lives, we're 75% complete. After three half-lives, we're 87.5% complete. After four, we're 93.75% complete. And after five, we're 96.875% complete. And typically, we quote five half-lives as being equivalent to full completion of a reaction. And next, we look at the time constant, which is given uh, the designation tau. Now, the time constant is certainly less intuitive than the half-life and it has a number of different definitions all of which are valid uh, but different textbooks will order them or word them differently which just adds to the confusion and um, the first definition i'll give is that the time constant is the theoretical time taken for the concentration to reach zero if the initial rate of decay continued and important to note here is that this is a theoretical time because as decay occurs and your plasma concentration falls by definition, in first order kinetics, you will get a change in rate. So this is not something that we can kind of carry out an experiment and measure. This is a, a mathematical concept that we can use. Another 
definition is that the time constant is the inverse of the rate constant of elimination or mathematically tau equals 1 over k and we'll come back to explain this as well and show where it comes from or you could say that the time constant is the time taken for the concentration to fall by 1 over e of its former value so analogous to the half-life being the time taken to fall to 1 over 2 or half of its initial value the time the time constant is the time taken to fall to 1 over 2.7 something something so to fall to less than half of its former value and therefore the time constant will always be longer than the half-life because the reaction is going to a further stage now we'll take each of those definitions in turn and go through them so the first one we said was that the time constant was the theoretical time taken for the concentration to reach zero if the initial rate of decay continued well, what does that mean well if we go to our plasma concentration against time graph our initial rate is the rate at this point here at time zero. So our initial rate here is at its steepest. And if that were to continue, it would come down. And the point at which the reaction would complete or the um, concentration would reach zero would be this point here, which would define our time constant. So that bit's fairly straightforward. A second definition was that the time constant is the inverse of the rate constant of elimination, i.e. that tau equals one over k. To understand where that comes from, we need to look at our graph again uh, and we need to use differentiation. So our graph here, as, as we've seen before, is our plasma concentration against time. And we've said by definition, our time constant is the, the time it would take for the reaction to reach completion were the original rate to continue. The function uh, of this curve is described by our equation here, which we've talked about. And to find the rate of change at any point on the function, or to find the gradient, those two things are the same thing, we need to differentiate the original function. So if we differentiate with respect to time, that's what this nomenclature here means, this equation, we use the normal rules of differentiation and exponential functions, and we find that the differentiation of this is minus k multiplied by c0 multiplied by e to the minus kt. That gives us the rate of change or the gradient for any given value of t, so anywhere along the line. But we're specifically looking at the point at which t equals zero, which helps us out because it simplifies things. So at the point where t equals zero, this minus kt term becomes zero, and you get e to the zero. e to the power zero is one, which means that the rate at time zero, or the gradient at time zero, is minus k multiplied by c naught multiplied by one which is minus kc naught. We then go on to say that the gradient at any point on a graph is all, also can be described by the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value. And you'll remember that from GCSE maths. So if, if the rate also equals the change in y over the change in x, we can say, well, what's the change in y? The change in y here is that we've gone from c naught down to zero. So our change in y is minus c naught. For the change in x, we've gone from 0 to tau, so the change is tau. This description here is exactly the same as this description here. They're talking about the same thing. They're talking about the gradient of the graph at time 0. So they must be equivalent to each other. So minus k times by c0 equals minus c0 over tau. You can see from here that the c0 functions will cancel, and the minus signs will also cancel. And so k equals 1 over tau. Or if we rearrange, we can say that tau equals 1 over k. Our third definition of the time constant was that it was the time taken for the concentration to fall to 1 over e of its former value. So let's look at that then. And we go back to our graph. And what we're saying is, what is the concentration um, at this point here? So at, at our time being tau, we extrapolate back. And what's our plasma concentration at this point? Well, our plasma concentration at any point is given by our familiar equation. And now we're just saying if we substitute t, a generic time, for a specified time of tau, what can we work out the concentration at time tau to be? We've already seen that tau is 1 over k. So if we plug 1 over k in, in place of tau, we get this phrase here, where we end up with a minus k over k. k over k is 1, so that becomes c naught e to the minus 1 e to the minus 1 is the same as 1 over e. So that leaves us with our concentration at time tau as c naught over e. 
And remember that E is larger than 2, it's about 2.7. And so that means that the reaction has gone much further than halfway by the time we've reached one time constant. It's gone about 63%. And compare that to what we would have seen for a half-life, where if we'd have gone to a concentration of C over 2 and extrapolated across, our half-life would have been around here. So our half-life, as a function of the mathematics, will always be shorter than our time constant. Finally, we'll go on to discuss the relationship between half-life and time constant. Long story short, the relationship is that half-life equals ln2, the time constant, where ln2 is log to the base e of 2 and has a numerical value of 0 0.693. We'll go through the maths just for completion. So if we start with our normal equation for first order kinetics that we know and love, we can say that rather than now than having a generic time and some sort of generic time-based plasma concentration, we can stipulate that at a t a half, uh, t now becomes t a half, our plasma concentration we know by definition will be half of c naught. So we substitute those values in. We can then cancel c naught from both sides to give us this equation here. We then take natural logarithms, so we take the natural log of a half and the natural log of this exponential function, which takes out our exponent, and then recognise that using logarithms, uh, uh, ln of 1 over x is the same as minus ln of x. So apply that rule. We can then cancel minus signs from both sides to give us this equation here, and then rearrange for half-life. We then recognise that... Uh, our time constant was defined as 1 over k, as we have went through previously. So if we substitute that in to our equation that we had, where we had lin2 times by 1 over k, then we get that half-life is ln2 times by the time constant, which is 0 0.693 times by the time constant, i.e. the half-life is always shorter than the time constant um, to this proportionality factor of 0 0.693. So listening, I hope that was useful.